Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Awesome. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing good. All right, so I'm currently setting up uh, your student sheet. Uh, what's your OGS handle? Are you Do you play on OGS or do you play on KGS? Yes, on OGS. Uh, Disco Panda. Okay, same thing. Okay, Disco Panda. All right, listen, we're starting at 19Q. All right, so this is your first lesson. So um, can you tell me a little bit about your study habits uh, and how, like what you do during the week for studying and whatnot? Try to do some life and death problems. Uh, yeah, mostly that. Okay, uh, how many games do you play during the week? Mm, I try to play. Uh... Maybe between five and ten, but it's not live games. Okay. Um, do you play live games, or are you able to play live games, or do you just want to play only correspondence? I would like to play uh, play more live games. Alrighty. So that's my goal. Cool. Um, do you want to? Uh, how many live games do you want to try to play a week? know what's what's a good number <laughs> um i think uh 10 games a week um is actually is a really good number but not everyone can do that so if you can play like at least five games a week i think that's pretty pretty decent but anywhere to 10 to 20 games a week uh is going to okay. be ideal but everyone has life yeah okay yeah i will aim for 10 don't... okay <laughs> so going to Aim for ten games a week. Um. All right. Um. So, do you want to? Do you have any specific games you want to look at? Do you want to just uh, dive right into to a game? Um. Well, I had uh, I played some games against this dude named SS seventy six. Um. Review started. Uh, all of the games turned out like that uh, and I don't really know uh, if it's good or not okay. uh, so I started the review are you able to join the review yes or in the game yeah so in the game it should pop up in chat the Colossus review um, in the chat of the game and you just click that that review link oh yeah Alrighty, so let's go ahead and look at this starting out. Um, so you are white. So open. So what I want to see um, for the night of 19 is make sure that we're following the classy approach basics, which is uh, watch your cutting points and then follow some uh, basic night of 19 principles, which is open corners, open sides, largest framework, and make your bases and finish your Josekis. Um, All right, so this. All right, so you took here. So normally, mm -hmm. uh, if they don't respond, the pincer is here because we like to have one low, one high uh, for a pincer. Um, but this one's okay. Um, I'm assuming you're trying to attack the stone because you didn't take the base. Uh, I don't really know any Yuseki, so I just try to... Sh should I know Yuseki by... Um, so have you, uh, so I do have a video for beginner Joe Psyches, so let me give that to you. Uh, you do need to know some Joe Psyches to play on the Night by 19, um, but yeah. there's, there's some few simple ones. Uh, so let me send you a link to this. Uh, and that is, uh, some beginner Joe Psyches that you can start with. Okay. And that's a good starting point. So at this level, um, before, so we don't really have to attack our opponents, uh, our opponents' bases until like 16Q, 15Q. So if you want, what you could do is just play right here. Uh, the goal of this move is because black is on both sides of our position, then we want to descend down in order to make our base in the corner. Uh, if he wasn't over here, we would make our base like right here. Uh, does mm -hmm. that kind of make sense? Yeah. All right. So yes. this is just 
Our opponent's surrounding us, so we're going to make a base. But this is fine. You're taking your opponent's base. Okay, connect back. Perfectly fine. And then you block. And you block your base. Uh, that's all perfectly fine. Uh, so now, do you have a base? Are you okay? I think so, in the corner. Mm -hmm. So because your base is good, you're not getting surrounded, uh, now you are no longer a weak group. So now we don't play defense, we play big move. Uh, we could play offense, but um, we can just do that at 16Q, 15Q. For now, let's just think defense first and then big move. So a good okay. big move would be the right side or the bottom side because we're still at open sides. So I think um, something like this would be good or maybe a wedge or an approach or something, just something like that. Uh, but just play, uh, play a big move. Okay. So this is one thing you want to get out of the habit of, getting stuck in a local variation and yeah. not looking at the whole board. So this is going to be our first habit. Especially pushing from behind like this, this is really good for your opponent. When you push and then push and then push and then push and then push, uh, technically you're just making your opponent stronger and stronger and stronger. Um, okay. And at any time, you, uh, the not every single one of these moves is gote, or sorry, sente, which means forcing. So your opponent could have ignored some of these moves and went and played a big move or mm -hmm. went and canceled out uh, your entire position. So let's say he just played right here and reduced it or something. Um, then you could see that he got the points on the left, but you didn't get much value on the center. Yeah. So you got to be wary about pushing from behind like that. So uh, first shape is pushing from behind is generally not good. And uh, look for chances to get to the big move. Don't get stuck in local fights. All right, so that's just going to be our, our big first lesson is try to avoid playing a bunch of moves only on one position or one situation. Um, mm -hmm. Once you're okay, once you, once you have your base and once you don't have cutting points, then you're good. Once you're good, you want to tanuki to the next big move. And that's kind of the first thing, the first habit to build is try to tanuki as soon as possible. Uh, tanuki means to play somewhere else away from the local situation. Mm -hmm. All right, so okay. here you fix your cutting point. Uh, this is okay, but this one technically isn't a cutting point. Um, okay. <laughs> so if we just play here and our opponent cuts, um, first off, we want to check, can we just net? Doot, 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 doot. Um, and actually, yeah, we can. We can go like this. Uh, there is a cut right here, but two liberties to two liberties. Black wins. Um, then we also want to check if there's a ladder. If we don't like, if that one doesn't work, so maybe we'll check the ladder. But this one looks like it goes into black. So this ladder doesn't work. Uh, the net does, but maybe that one doesn't. So let's check this net. Doot, 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 doot. Uh, and this one actually looks like it does work. So that net works. Um, and then we do have two cuts. So let's say I play one and then play the other. Uh, so we want to check this. So this one, also a net. Then this one, doot, 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 doot. And it looks pretty okay, actually. Uh, but there is this one, so maybe that's not okay. So maybe there's a small problem. So I would say if you wanted to fix something, hmm, maybe it's okay. But the, the way I arrive there is what's important. I don't just say there's a cut I'm going to fix. I try to read the cut. Can I, and the way I read it is first I imagine my opponent uh, first I imagine my opponent cuts. Then I say, can I just capture it? So can I net or ladder? Right? Okay. Um so I check and see if the cut works. Then I check and see if there's a combination with another cut. And if I see that the cut works one way or the other, then I'll fix it. But if I don't see it working, if I say this is a net, this is a ladder, or whatever, then I'm not going to worry about fixing it. Um, and that's the habit that I want you to build, is always, always, always read the cuts. Um, in this case, technically, there was a net right here, um, and there's a net uh, right here. Yes, he can Atari, but that's a squeeze. So technically, there's no cut. Um, but it's fine. If you if you read that and you were uh, and it looked like there was a cut, then that's worth defending. But one thing I don't want you to do is defend without reading the cut. Always yeah. read the cuts. Okay. Always read the cuts. All right. So he plays big move. Um, so now black is a little bit ahead because black has the bottom side and you don't really have a big position yet. 
Um, I wouldn't play the three three here because this is a this is more middle game. Um, mm. Well, kind of. Um, so the reason it's middle game is because it's not just the star point. Your opponent has a position, so you're invading his position. But remember, open sides are bigger than largest framework. So we want to go to the open sides, uh, finish that, and then we'll start middle game and go for the largest framework and think like 3-3 three, three or reduce or whatever. So I still okay. think the right side would be more basic. Yeah. Okay, so okay, so you did get in the corner and he goes and plays a big move. Um, so you notice how black is tanuking a lot. Uh, yeah. That's one thing you want to get a good handle on is getting to those big positions first um or at least sharing if your opponent gets one you should get one okay so um make sure that uh that's what we're looking for is chances to tanuki once we're okay so here you lived um you're pretty okay um i would just take uh this one your opponent gets one more forcing move so mm -hmm. all right so now um are you alive in the corner yes all right so we want to play somewhere else so here is that bad habit again, where we keep yeah. playing out situations. We want to go play the next big move. So maybe we attack the stone. Maybe we defend our corner. Um, maybe we attack it from this way and build a moyo. Do something big. But yeah, you keep getting caught up in local situations. All right, so now you do Tanuki. So we ask uh, open corners, no. Open sides, no. So we think largest framework. Uh, now, you said the largest framework is the bottom right, so you invade it, and that's fine. This is basic. Um, I think this one might be a little bit easier, because that mm -hmm. way, when you run away, you see how there's a black stone that is all by its lonesome? So it makes it yeah. a little bit easier to run if he's weaker. But it's okay. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, this one is a little much. So the reason this one is a little much is because you got to realize that these two stones are weaker. They don't have a base. And they're behind uh, Black's line of influence. Uh, so you are behind enemy lines, um, oh. and you don't have a base, so you have a weaker. And in the Klossy approach, we say defense first. So what is defense for this group? Well, it's make a base if you can, but you can't really make a base because Black's on the second line. So you just don't have any ice base. So then you'd be at step two, run away. Nice. So this is what I would like to see. But what's very important is when we play defense, we stay connected. Because if we do not stay connected, then we end up with multiple weak groups. So like for example, if I cut right here, and let's say you try to cut black or something, you can see white has two weak groups now. And there's no way to connect these weak groups. And every single move will be attacking it. Yeah, okay. Um, so yeah, uh, does that kind of make sense why I'm not a big fan of this move? Yeah, I, I can see. No. <laughs> yeah, so when you play defense, make sure uh, you think, stay connected, run away. That's defense. And defense should be your highest priority at this level. So here, I would be thinking, try to connect, try to connect, try to connect. Because, you know, defense. <laughs> So something like this, I think, would be fantastic. And then run away, or um, I don't know, run away this way, maybe block, um, run away this way. You know, just something that gets out. Just mm. connect my groups and run away. And I think that would be ideal here. Uh, but this one is a Hane. So we all know a Hane, but do you think Hane is a good move for defense? Uh, no. <laughs> and why is that? Because it leaves uh, opening a cut. Oh, yeah. Correct. So Hane's, like Knight's moves, um, is not great for defense. It's good for offense and maybe for building, but not so much for defense. Because for defense, you want to stay connected. And so Hane's are cuttable. This is very dangerous. Uh, so maybe I would fix here, you go here, and then I cut. Mm. Uh, so it's very dangerous for white. Uh, this one, you're, are you, uh, alive with these stones? I guess not. Well, how do you determine if you're no. alive or not? Do you know how to determine if they're a weak group or not? Uh, no. <laughs> Is it uh, when I have too many openings or? Uh, cuts? there's a, there's a few hints. One, do you have cutting points? Two, do you have a base? 
Or three, oh. are you getting surrounded? Oh, yeah. Okay. So you kind of have like all of those. You have cutting yeah. points, you don't have a base, and you are getting surrounded by black. <laughs> so if I play here to connect my stones as black, you can, and then let's say you check you one more time. Uh, you can start noticing that white's actually getting in a lot of trouble. So maybe here and here. Uh, white's getting in a lot of trouble very quickly. That's because white has cutting points and white doesn't have any eye space and white's getting surrounded. So that's that's how you recognize if something is weak or strong. Is is it getting surrounded? Um, does it have eye space? Does it have cutting points? Uh, those are kind of your rules of thumb for, for weakness. And when you identify your own weakness, you need to say, my weakness comes first. So I'm going to play defense first. So I don't like that you should make it right here. I think you should save your stone. Uh, and while you actually save your stone, you actually cut off black as well. So it's kind of a multi-purpose here. But the idea is just save your stuff. Defense first. Defense first. So I don't really like this to Nikki. Mm, do you think this is a good move? Uh, no okay um so how do we have to identify so i um don't want to just tell you ex what's good and what's bad i want you to mm. learn how to identify it so how do we identify this so first we need to tackle what is the goal of the turn what do you think white should be doing run, uh, run away mm -hmm. so Maybe we should be playing defense on the group yeah. and run away all right um and what are our general rules of thumb for defense making a base so. mm -hmm. um, we can't make a base here so we go to our kind of second rule of thumb which is run away but basically yeah. stay connected run away or make a base or run away um, so is this move connected to your stones no so do you think it's a good defense move uh, no <laughs> so I don't think this is a good move because the goal of the turn is to help these weak groups and this stone mm. is not connected so how does it help the group and I don't think it does. So I think this is not a good move because we're not playing defense. Mm. Mm -hmm. Fix your cuts. Okay, so you save those. Go here. So actually, um, you see how this is kind of this is kind of funny. You see how Black never attacked you, um, mm. and somehow your weak group ended up surrounding Black. So <laughs> that I think is uh, maybe why you don't um, understand like uh, the weakness is because your opponents are not punishing you. Your opponents are actually yeah. making your weak groups survive with points. <laughs> so oh. your your opponents are actually making your weak groups uh, give you a moyo, and that's not usually how to do it. And that's because they're supposed to cut you and surround you for attacking, and yeah. they're not doing that. So I think uh, I think the problem here is um, your opponents are not punishing you, so you don't. So you're not recognizing if something's weak or not. And I think that's the big lesson here. Um, so learn to recognize weak groups. Do they have cutting points? Do they have a base? Are they getting surrounded? So learn to recognize weak groups and weakness. And then once you can recognize that, you should think defense first. And then once you have no weakness, mm -hmm. then you want to go ahead and play the next big move. And big move is open corners, open sides, largest framework. Okay. And that's pretty much the basics of the glossy approach. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. Um, do you have any questions about what I've said so far? Uh, no. Right. Uh, do you Sounds have good. do you have any questions about how I'm arriving at my answers? Because that's that's the big thing you want to take from this lesson is learning mm. how that I how do I arrive at my answers, not just what my answers are, but how do I arrive at them? That's what we want to take from the lesson. Uh, so, okay. do you have any questions about how I'm arriving at my answers? Mm. Uh, I think I get get it. Okay. Um, and then we'll just keep going over more and more examples and um, hopefully you'll be able to make something click. Um, so here, uh, this is still cuttable. I'd rather play a one-point jump. One-point jumps are actually a, a very nice shape for us as a beginner. Um, as double-digit mm -hmm. Q players, one-point jumps are kind of like our, our go-to shape. It's one of our friends. 
uh, simply because it's very easy to work with, it's very easy to connect, uh, and it's decently fast-paced movement. So I really like one-point jumps. Uh, this one, however, there is still a cutting point here. So we got to worry about that. Okay. Oh, well, then he fixes you, so that's nice. Um, okay. So now, actually, do we have any weakness? Well, I am connected. Mm -hmm. So all of your stuff's connected. Is there yeah. any cutting points? Is anything getting surrounded? Well, it's getting surrounded on the... No. On the other... I don't know. I guess not. Okay. Or... Um, so your stones actually look pretty good. Uh, there is one minor weakness um, right here because you can't net because of this shape. Uh, but that is a ladder. Uh, and I don't think it runs into yours. Yeah, just slightly misses it. So, so yep. Yeah, um, so that uh, that cut does work. So that's the only weakness that I see. Uh, so I think white is perfectly okay. Okay. So we don't have to respond anymore because we are okay. So now we go to the next big thing. Uh, so open corners, no open sides, no solid framework. Definitely whites. And actually on this board, we can identify that this stone is getting surrounded by white. So we can actually pressure this stone. And the way we do that is just do the opposite. So the first thing we want for defense is a base. So the first thing we want for offense is to take that base. So this would be a really nice move. Take the base. And then once the base is taken, they try to run away. So now they can't make a base. So now you think step two, they want to run away. So you want to stop that. So you want it to surround. Uh, and this sort of one, two, three combination, I think would be perfect for white right now. Uh, so here's uh, your habit again, uh, responding locally. So we want to get fix that habit and start thinking about the big stuff. We don't want to keep responding locally. We want to, there we go. This is actually really nice. Okay, so you slide to the eye space. Take a vital point. So a tiger's mouth is a shape point. That's very nice. Ooh, this is actually very nicely played. Oh, good reading. It's good reading here. Uh, so yeah, this is actually very nice on how you attacked it. I think you could have attacked it sooner, uh, mm. but otherwise, pretty good. Um, okay, so now we are actually in Yosei, or Endgame. Our hint for that is we did the attacks, so the attacks are done, so there's no more attack defense. So now, is there any large frameworks to build or reduce? Uh, no, all that's left is just pushing borders. So when we're pushing borders, then we know we are in endgame. So the first thing in endgame you do is think about uh, second line sente, first line sente, uh, push the borders in sente, and then play a big move. So in this case, I think um, the only sente white has is probably like right here. And then play a big move like right here. I think that would be good enough. Uh, honestly, though, I think uh, actually you have to play this one because if you play this one, he might just go play here. And then you have a little bit of bad shape. So because of cutting points, I think maybe it's worth defending. But if you don't see those cuts, then Yose and then play a big move. Uh, this one's a little bit small, and that's because in endgame, we want Sente. Sente, Sente, Sente. Sente is super important. Okay. Okay. And just fix with connections. The only time you fix with tiger's mouths is if you need mm -hmm. eyes, but you already have uh, like two eyes over here. So you don't need eyes here. You just need to connect. Uh, and the reason is because here is a co-threat. So because uh, this is a co-threat, I would just fix here. Okay. Okay. Very nice. And it looks like you just won the game here. All right, so um, do you have any more questions about this game in particular? I, I think my biggest problem was uh, I was playing locally, as you said. Mm -hmm. uh, I knew something was wrong. <laughs> yep, um, I think that's a, that's a big thing to take from this game is yeah. once you recognize that you're 
okay, no cutting points, you have a base, you're not getting surrounded, then Tanuki, and I think that's good. Uh, but at the same time, you don't want to play like this one where you Tanuki all of the stones over here and don't defend. So you defend, but once you're alive, go play the next big move. That's the, that's the lesson here. Make sense? Yeah. All right. So let's look at, uh, another game. Do you have another game? Uh, yeah, we can take one, uh, the live game. Alright. Um so let's see, this one was against SS seventy six, so I think the Alrighty. Review started. So, so All right. I usually use the Yuseki on the OGS. Mm hmm I don't know if it's good or not. The uh the Joseki? Yeah. Um, it could yeah. be pretty good. Um, the Joseki video, video that I sent you um, mm -hmm. picks some like easy to understand Josekis to start with. Uh, yeah. But if you ever like find yourself with um, a position that like you haven't seen before, mm -hmm. um, then I would recommend looking it up or asking someone to show you. Uh, some Josekis are probably too difficult for you right now. But uh, the way you learn Josekis is you learn them one at a time. So mm -hmm. as they come up in games, if your opponent plays a Joseki you don't know, then yeah, I, I would say look it up. But I would start with the video um, and yeah. just start with some simple Josekis first and then add on one at a time as you get stronger. Um, okay. All right. So the first thing I notice is there is a, a cutting point uh, in this game. So shoot Atari. He connects. Atari. He goes here. And double Atari. Uh so when uh when you fill Dame at the end, always watch the cutting points at the end of the game. Okay. Always watch these cutting points at the end of the game. All right, so you're blocks. Let's start the game. Do, do, do. Open corners. Approach. Ah, so he doesn't play Joseki. So whenever your opponent does something weird, um, yeah. just simpl simplify it back to basics. So what are the basics? Defense first. Does your stone have a base? No. So make a base. Okay. okay. He does something weird. Doesn't matter. Do you have yeah. a base? Yep. Is there any cutting points? Nope. Are you getting surrounded? Nope. All right, then you're good to go. Go play a big move. Then you can go play here. Okay. That's the way you handle that. Okay, good base. Um, this is a little bit unnecessary. Well, I guess it's fine. Okay, so when you play on your opponent's side, um, I usually recommend approach or play a wedge because you are on your opponent's side of control. So I want to start looking at third line for a base. Uh, mm -hmm. or I want to play like a Joseki or something like here or like that or something like that. Um, and then I can reduce later. But if your opponent's side is the open side, usually you want to play on the third line because fourth line is a little bit more difficult to use at this level. Okay. So here you want to go down and make a base. You want to start making that base and bases are on the third line. All right, so this is uh, defense wise, you're doing good because you want to run away, but you want to run here. Okay. This shape is a little bit dangerous. Do a one point jump and then turning one point jump because uh -huh. if you turn one point jump, I can do a double peep. Uh huh, okay. <laughs> so you actually need one more move and then you can turn. And the difference is now when I push through, it's a tiger's mouth, so there's no cut. Mm. And yes, you can cut this one. But the trick is you sacrifice it, and you see you just walk down. Mm -hmm. And because of that double tiger's mouth, that's why that shape's good. So I would one point jump one more, and then if you wanted to turn, you could turn. Okay. It's a little bit better shape. All right, uh, is this good for defense? Uh, uh, no. <laughs> All right, um, why not? I should stay connected, uh, and Ahane is not the <laughs> good move for... Mm -hmm. So defense, uh, so he can cut yeah. you right here, and it's a bit dangerous. Okay, so you actually fixed the cut. <laughs> this is why he said you need uh, your opponents keep fixing you. Uh, so he fixed your cut, so that's very nice. Okay. Um, does this cut work? 
So what, what are we doing? Are we playing defense, offense, big move? What are we doing? I don't know. Peaking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this this type of stuff is actually usually bad. Simply because okay. you're actually forcing your opponent to connect. Um, mm. So you're actually making him stronger. You never know when something like that could be good. So for example, let's say I turn right here. And he wants to play mm. here. Well, now there's an Atari. But if you play mm. like this, then there's no Atari. Because white fixes, and then you turn. Now there's no Atari, so maybe he runs away. Right? Okay. So technically speaking, you are making your opponent stronger. So it's usually okay. not good to do moves like this unless you have a good reason. Okay. I think we should be playing defense like this. Um, and then maybe here for the tiger's mouth. Uh, and this is the tiger's mouth, so that's that's okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Otherwise, we can play like this because pushing from behind is usually good for our, our opponent. Um, so in order to not push from behind, we play a knight's move to get ahead as soon as the cut doesn't work. Okay. Um, if if this cut works, then we would just push one more. Uh, and now it's already a nice move, so we just connect. Doot, 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 doot. And we watch our cutting points. See, all about the cutting points. That's what shapes are. It's just ways of... Shapes are like movement. Uh, so good mm -hmm. shapes are movement that accomplish the goal without getting cut or without leaving weakness. So that's good movement. Um, so just think of shapes as like movement about staying connected and accomplishing your goal. Are you playing defense? Then run away. Are you playing a big move? Then reduce or invade or build. Uh, and then you play shapes that do that. So don't play shapes just for the sake of playing them because otherwise you end up doing this where you attack yourself. So you see how you're actually forcing white to take a liberty of your weak group? Yeah. And now you have to defend. So you actually attack yourself here. Okay. Yeah. Um... I want to play like this move because <laughs> uh, the the A group mm. has I space a B, so that is your base. Your base is worth defending. So when you play something like this, let's say I do go here, do 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 do, and let's say I cut you or something, and then I take your base, and then I surround you. It's just a little uncomfortable. So because of that, I usually like playing. For my base. I mean, just simple stuff. Just block the base. Easy peasy. Yeah. And then you don't have any problems. But if you're not careful, if you don't block that base, you can have problems. This is not, uh, this doesn't help your base, simply because first line doesn't help your eye space. Uh, so this is just Yose, and Yose is too small. So white could, white could ignore Dory here. Okay. Because first line is really small. Okay, you fix your cut. That's good. All right, um, so we are at largest framework. So you are saying um, the bottom, bottom, bottom right is the largest. Uh, so you're trying to build it. Uh, touching moves are more single digit Q because there's a lot of reading involved and judgment. So I would say the shape I would want you to play mm. is probably just the capping move here. Uh, that way you build the area. And if he plays this, the response to a capping move is a nice move. Uh, sorry, not sorry, not the uh, the response to an elephant's eye, which is a diagonal one point jump. Uh, mm -hmm. A response to the elephant's eye getting cut is a knight's move, either here or here. So you just check those. So if you go here, he pushes up, um, and then maybe this kind of point, right? So uh, you would play this one, and now if he pushes up, you block. And you see, dude, ladder, easy peasy. Yeah. So I like the capping move here. Uh, because the capping move builds our area and it does it without touching our opponent. And touching our opponent is going to make them stronger, so I like to avoid doing that if possible. Okay. Um, connect. Stay connected. There's this one. Or yeah. this one, maybe. So just some things to worry about. Mm. All right, so white plays the top side. Um, so now, uh, defense, so base. Okay, so you attack. Uh, this is a bit possible. Um, I think it's probably worth defending your base. The kick shape does have a weakness uh, right here. You can't actually yeah. cut this, because if you try to cut white Ataris. Uh, but with that being said, 
there is this move and this move. So you can still be alive here, so it's okay. But that weakness does exist. So usually when white gets a stun on both sides, you want to defend that. Def and the reason we play here is just it's defend our base and remember defense first. Defend our base. Yeah. Defend our base. Um, otherwise, we can one point jump if we don't like that. Uh, but you played a big move. So you're saying that uh, you want control of the center, so you play cap. Okay. Uh, but if you play an invade, that's not consistent. If you wanted to invade the top side, why not go here? And make a base. Okay. If you think if you say the top side is the biggest, then just play the top side. If you say the center is the biggest, then just build the center. Right? Okay. So be consistent with your plan. Yeah. Touch, yeah, just play defense. Um you can actually go here. Usually touch you respond. But three threes can be okay if you want to sacrifice it. Okay, it's really good for you. Does this cut work? Uh, no. He, yeah, he would die if he cuts. Mm -hmm. he so, unnecessary fix? Yeah. Alright. Oh, are you alive? Yes. Alright, so this is too small. Mm. You can go play a big move, uh, like here. Make that big center. Yeah, too small. Also, don't descend down like this. It's better to just connect. Because okay. you don't want them to block in Sente. You want that block to be Gote. Because if it's Gote, then later you can reduce more. But if it's Sente, then you lose the option to reduce more. So blocking okay. here is not good. Or going descending down right here is not good. Unless you need eyes, which you don't. Right. Here's your opponent making your area big again. Okay, defend your cutting points. All right, so he goes in. So when they go in like this, uh, all you want to do is surround to push them to the edge. Surround to push them to the edge. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, uh, so surround to push them to the edge is the normal way to play in middle game. But at the end of the game, when you already have all of this thickness, mm -hmm. white is already surrounded. Okay, so when you have massive thickness, massive thickness, and there's no escape route, no way he's going to escape. So this is like at the very end of the positions. Uh, mm -hmm. If they try to invade, then you actually go to step three of the classy approach. Step two is surround, but step three is eye space. So actually, I would attack from right here and right here and reduce. Because I don't care if they go up, right? Like I play here. I don't care if they go up and run away. That's, that's not going to bother me. Because what do you notice? They have nowhere to run to. Where are they going to run? Yeah. As long okay. as they just run into block zones. So once it's the end of the game and they try to invade like this, you actually go to step three instead of step two because they're already surrounded. So this is a way to kill it. But if you're unsure, then yeah, just surround and push them to the edge. Cut. When they invade like that, they have to watch their cutting points. So okay. Cut. Doot, doot. Doot, doot. Oops. Why did that? Yeah, so this is a cutting point. Uh, touching, touching, touching is usually not. Mm. Yeah, that's just going to give your opponent forcing moves. Cut. Attack and defense. Mm. The fundamentals of attack and defense is cutting points. So that's okay. definitely what you want to focus on. It's cutting points. Uh, there's that cut. Dude, and you have to fix. Yeah. Ooh, white's life and death. Boom. Mm. Yeah. Maybe this doesn't work. <laughs> so I go here, white goes here. I played that move later, but he did not play the P1. He played O1 instead. Ah. So that's why. Uh, yeah. 
Hmm. How to attack this? Maybe just start here. Yeah, it looks like you can live right there because there's two battle points. Interesting. Maybe he can live because <laughs> P1 looks like a battle point. Ooh, but that doesn't work. Atari. Ooh. One, two, three liberties to one, two liberties. Okay. Liberties and cuts. Liberties and cuts. These are our small board basics, so we don't want to forget our small board basics. Liberties and cuts. Liberties and cuts. Um, no. This locally reduces them to one eye, but you have a cutting point right yeah. here. So technically, it's a little bit dangerous for you to try to kill this. Mm. So if I go here, and you go here, and I go here, one, two, three to one, two, three, four. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, cutting points. Snap back. And if he connects, then he connects. We try to Atari. Oops. Yeah. So cutting points. Also, dude, 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 dude. Oops. Yep, cutting points. Uh, I would go here. Tiger's mouth, tiger's mouth. And fixes the cutting points. Uh, pushing diagonals is usually good for your opponent. Uh, if you're going to block, just block. Okay. Uh -oh. Okay, so you saved some of it. Okay, good Yosei. Uh, don't play this one though. This one's much bigger. Remember in Yosei, we, and mm -hmm. we know we're in Yosei because we're pushing borders. Yosei is Sente, 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 Sente. So play okay. the Sente first. Do, 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 do. Monkey Island. All the Sente. Play all the Sente. Sente, Sente, Sente. Uh, this is not a point. Because why just the Taris and you connect and there's no point. Okay, yeah. Ah. Oh. Yeah, he has thirty. Yeah. Oh, I like uh, your go problems definitely help you. I I can see that your life and death is definitely better than your opponents. So, yeah, your life and death is really good. Um. So I, I think the big lesson is um, uh, learn, uh, watch your cutting points. Uh, but I think, yeah, following your opponent um, instead of tuning into a big move. And I think also understanding um, understanding weak groups and, when, and understanding if you need a base or need to fix. Uh, and then going to the next big thing. I think un improving that judgment is going to be your first step. Uh, so yeah, cutting points, um, weak groups, and like bases and stuff. So just weak groups in general and cutting points and getting to those big moves. I think that'll really help you out. Uh, that's the stuff I think you should take from this lesson um, is how to make those just judgment calls of when to play elsewhere, when not to. Uh, learning how to increase your judgment of what's weak, what's not. That's I think what, what I really want you to take from this lesson. Uh, but the thing that you do well is I think your life and death is doing well. So I think you actually do, a, uh, I think the to go problems that you're doing is very useful. So keep doing that because it looks like your life and death is pretty good. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's where I think your strength and weaknesses are. Uh, do you have any questions about my, uh, notes for today or how I arrived at any of my conclusions or any of the games? Oh, uh. It's good. <laughs>
Awesome. Um, so to clarify, uh, remember I'm all I'm doing is just using the classy approach and the step by steps yeah. uh, to yeah. arrive at my conclusion of what is weak, and if there is no weakness, just go play a big move. Open corners, open yeah. sides, largest framework, and then we'll learn more about how to deal with that as you develop the habits of uh, of going over there. You'll learn more and more shapes to deal with it. Um, so yeah, I would say watch the Joseki video. Uh, you said aim for ten games a week, and yeah, yeah, work on your pushing from behind and you how you keep responding. Once it's alive, go play the next big move. I think that will already be a good habit um, to work on. And then, yeah, it's just going to be taking it one one lesson at a time, one tactic at a time, one shape at a time, one joseki at a time. Um, yeah, with that, um, we, uh, do you have any other questions that I can answer while you have me? Uh, uh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> well if you have questions um i do encourage you in the future um like if you have questions write them down and bring them to the lessons that way you know if you if you uh need me to answer something if it's just a quick question you can message me on discord but if it's like mm -hmm. a position question or something like that uh just write it down and bring it to the lesson and i'm happy to answer any questions you have um i think that's really good but overall uh my job is to make sure that you stay on track but uh think of it like a railroad um mm -hmm. How fast you go down the railroad, it all depends on uh, you, on how much you play, how much you study, and everything else. My job is to make sure you don't get derailed on, like, a bad habit or derailed on, like, tunnel vision or derailed on other stuff. Uh, so my job is to make sure that you stay on the railroad track. Your job is to play games and study to move down the railroad track. Does that make sense? Yeah. Awesome. So uh, I think that's where we're at. So I want you to work on that bad habit of... Uh, not playing elsewhere and work on your judgment for identifying weaknesses and when uh, you should and should not play elsewhere. Uh, and I think that's just the big thing I want you to take from this lesson. Sound good? Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so yeah, hopefully you found that lesson helpful. And here are my notes. I sent them to you on Discord. Um, and just to verify, we, I think, have the next lesson on the 28th. Is that correct? Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, hopefully you found this lesson helpful and hopefully uh, you got a lot out of it. And uh, as always, if you have questions, message me on Discord. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. And then yeah, if you have questions in the future about positions or something, just bring on me or any Joseki questions. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. happy to I'm happy to answer those uh, next time as well. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Um, Thanks. Yeah, hopefully you found that helpful and I will see you when I see you. Yeah. Thanks. Have a good one. You too.